Hi, hello, greetings, and welcome back again to the Biosampler Summary. I'm John with the Lynch Lab at Duke University, and in this segment we are going to be going through the software needed to run the Biosampler. In the last couple sections, we went through the assembly process. If you have not seen those videos, maybe take a look at those before continuing. We are going to first take a look at the master script here, and then we're going to go through some test files that help calibrate and make sure everything's working for the instrument. So the script starts here with some initialization and imports. These are different library packages that Python needs to run the script. Then we set up our SPI configuration, which runs the analog to digital converter chip. That's the MCP3008 analog to digital converter. We will define our first GPIO pin here. So GPIO is general purpose input output pin. And we need to tell the Pi each pin that we're using to either send a signal to something or receive a signal from something. And so we're going to set up our Peltier, our thermoelectric cooler on pin 17. We're going to then set up, start that Peltier module with a duty cycle of zero. So that is off to begin with. Next, we're going to de define a couple functions. So make dir here, make directory, is going to set up a process log folder. So if you go into your biosampler folder and sample logs, it's going to make a folder for your sample logs based on the unique identifier number that you enter when you start the process run. Next, we have two get temperature functions. So these are going to call a channel reading from that analog to digital converter chip, reading channel 0 or channel 1, which is the two channels of the thermal probes. It's going to take that raw reading and it's going to translate it into a temperature and then return that temperature. Next, we have initial control temp. So this is going to be one of the first functions that starts up with the process run. And it's going to start by cooling the sample block with a duty cycle of 100%. So it is cooling at its maximum rate. And it's going to cool the sample block down to whatever the defined set point is, minus 0 0.1 degrees Celsius. And then once it reaches that temperature, it's going to switch over to control temp here. So control temp is going to run for a defined number of seconds, which is the number of seconds in between samples. And it is going to basically control the temperature of the sample block. So it's going to turn off and on the Peltier module above and below the temperature set point in order to regulate that temperature. Next, we're going to set up our Cartesian system here. So we again begin by defining the GPI opens for our stepper motors. There are two stepper motors, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis. And each of those has two GPI opens, one for the direction of the motor and one to make it step. Those two stepper motors then share one pin for the sleep function. So this allows us to turn off the motors when they're not in use, which a saves energy and B if there's any electrical noise in the system while they are energized it may jerk the motor around and move the sample needle in unwanted ways so we will turn off the motors when they're not in use. Next we define those directions of the stepper motor so clockwise counterclockwise we set our GPI opens as outputs the five that we just set up we then set our step resolution. So for the stepper motors we are currently using, they have 200 steps per revolution. And each of those steps can then be broken down further into fractions of a step. We are going to be using the micro step resolution. So each of those 200 steps is broken into 32 individual steps. And this does a few things. So firstly, it allows the motors to turn very smoothly. They are quieter they generate less heat, as well as they do have a little bit less torque. However, for our application here, we don't need a lot of power in our stepper motors. It also gives a higher resolution and finer control over moving the sample needle. So we can move it to the sample tubes with higher resolution. 
next we have two different delays here so our two different axes move slightly differently with the gantry moving along the x-axis and in the y direction the needle is just rotating between the two rows of sample tubes and the central vertical location because those move differently I set it up with two different speeds but if you wanted to change the speed of the stepper motors you would change this value here next we set up our end stop switches so define the GPIO pins for those set up the two GPIO pins this next section we define the coordinates of our sample tubes so the X coordinates are all different and the Y coordinates are all the same they're set at 140 currently so the needle is normally vertical between the two rows of sample tubes and so it should be rotating in one direction or the other by the same amount which is why the Y coordinate is the same if you wanted to change the locations of those sample tubes you would change these numbers here next we set up our pump and our valves so again we define some GPIO pins we set those pins as outputs we're going to start our pump with a duty cycle of zero so it's off to begin with we start our two valves with their pins set low which means they're in their primary position next we set up our pump rate our pump duty cycle so I've been working mostly with a pump duty cycle of 20 percent if you have your pump moving too much faster than this it can sometimes move fluids a little bit too aggressively which tends to leave fluid droplets on the sides of tubing if you go too much slower than this I've just found that the pump can be a little bit too inconsistent or sometimes not pump at all next these pump functions pump and valve functions so slow clear is just going to clear the sample tubing using air it's going to set the valves in the correct positions to move the air through the tubing it's going to move air for a designated number of seconds and then it's going to turn off the pump slow pump one and two here are going to pump fluids from different locations again for a desired number of seconds slow pump one here is going to energize valve one high which if the pinch tubing is set up correctly this will be pulling fluid from the source or from the bioreactor it's going to be turning on the pump at that defined pump rate it's pumping for however many seconds and then it's turning off the pump slow pump two same thing except valve one is low valve two is high so this will be pulling fluid from the cleaning solution clean bolus and air bolus clean bolus is just moving a bolus of cleaning solution through the sample tubing for five seconds so that is where you would define the size of that bolus if you wanted to increase the bolus size you would increase that value same with air bolus you're moving a bolus of air through the tubing clean here so this is a cleaning cycle that you would use after a sample process run and that will just clean your sample tubing it'll give you some instructions there measure and measure pump here so these functions measure first will read two channels of your analog di digital converter so it'll read channels two and three and these are the channels for your fluid sensors it will then take the values coming from there and it'll decide if those values are above or below your set thresholds for recognizing fluid in the tubing it will append those values to these lists hits one and hits two measure pump is then turning on your pump it's pumping air through your sample tubing and it's going to measure those fluid sensors while it's pumping it will then turn your pump off clean air clean here so this one is just going to alternate between a clean cleaning solution bolus and an air bolus moving through the tube it's then going to at the end do a full clear of the tubing this will cleanse your sample tubing in between samples next we have auto home so this is an important movement function it is going to locate the sample needle in the reference location which is 
over the waste tube on the far left of the sample block. We're going to run the auto home function before and after any other movement so that we can always make sure we're moving based on our coordinates from that reference location. Now I want to comment this block of code is what's actually running the stepper motor. So it is taking the Y direction, the direction of the Y stepper motor and setting that to clockwise. Then it's alternating between sw switching the step pin high and low and by alternating those pin, the step pin it's going to actually turn the stepper motor. So first it is turning the stepper motor until the Y button is engaged and then it is going to back off that Y end stop switch by 665 micro steps which should set the needle again in the vertical location between the two rows of sample tubes. Then it is moving the X gantry along the X axis again until the X end stop switch is engaged and then it's going to back off that by 10 micro steps. So just a little bit. Next we have our sampling function. So the sample is going to call a location of a sample tube, an XY coordinate, based on the sample number. It's going to log a sample start time and a temperature value of the sample block. It's going to write those values to the sample log. So we write our sample number, sample start time, and our temperature. It's then going to auto home the needle. It's going to set our GPIO pin, our sleep pin low, so it's turning off the stepper motors. Then we slow clear our tubing for 25 seconds. So this is clearing our sample tubing to begin with. We pump a purge volume for 15 seconds. If you wanted to change the size of your purge volume, you would increase or decrease that number. Then you're going to again clear the tubing, clear the pump, the purge volume to the waste then you are pulling a sample into the tubing and then slow clear here is going to move that sample that's in the sample tubing up towards the needle. This should not move, it should not be pumping your sample to the, to the waste. If a little bit comes out that's okay but really the purpose of this last slow clear is just to move the sample up towards the needle. Next we're going to move to our sample location. So we start by auto homing, moving the needle to that reference location. Then we're going to move along the X axis, followed by the Y axis to get to our sample tube. Then we take a temperature reading of the sample block. We log or we clock a sample time. We're going to write both of those values to the log file, the sample time and the temperature. Then we are using that measure pump function to pump the sample to the sample tube and we're measuring those fluid sensors at the same time. This is where we're then going to decide th this is the threshold of what is a successful sample. So if the length of those two lists, hits one and hits two, if they're both greater than 30, then that will be considered a successful sample. So that means if the fluid sensors recognize fluid in the tubing for that amount of time, there's that many hits in those lists, it will be considered successful. Next, it's going to move the needle in the reverse back to waste. Then we are going to auto home just to make sure that the needle is actually at the waste location. We're going to turn off the stepper motors. We are going to clock a sample end time and a temperature again of the sample block. It's going to write those values to the log file. It's going to tell you how long that sampling cycle took. And then it's also going to write to the log file if that sample was successful. Finishing up here it's going to run that clean air clean function so that we can cleanse our tubing in between samples and then again make sure that the stepper motors are off. Next we have some system control variables so these are some variables that you are going to want to change. 
sample number here is the first sample tube that you're going to be sampling. So if it's one, sample tube one is on the left side of the sample block on the row closer to you if you're facing the instrument. And so if it's one here, you're going to be starting with sample tube one. Number of samples, you're going to be taking 10 samples. Sample size, 100, so this is a relative sample size. And this is where if you decrease this, you will get less sample. If you increase, you will get more. Now this max temp ADC, that's analog digital converter value. This is a value that is being read from, it's the max value that can be read from your thermal probes. We'll be changing this number in the next video to calibrate those thermal probes. We got those values in the last one, if you want to take a look at that. And then in the next video, we will be calculating what this value should be and putting it in here. Set point, so this is the actual set point in Celsius of the sample block. It We've normally been running it at four Celsius. The holding duty cycle, so this is the duty cycle of the Peltier, the thermoelectric cooler, while other processes are running. So we're actually going to turn off the cooling while the stepper motors are running so that the system has enough energy to move these stepper motors. And then following the sample cycle, the thermal control will come back on. These valve one and valve two fluid value low and high. This is where you're going to calibrate your fluid sensors. So again, we'll do this in the next video as well in the operation section, but this is the bounds, the lower and upper bound of fluid recognition in your sample tubing. Next, we get down to our tri block here. So this is the code that's actually going to be running. So when we start up the script. It's going to just pause for two seconds. It's going to ask you to input a process number. So this is the unique identifier that you're applying. It's going to be attached to that sample log folder. The It will ask you for a sample interval in hours. So if you input three, it's going to take a sample every three hours. It's going to make you that sample log directory. It's going to set up your two logs. So there's a temperature log and a sample log here. And it'll initially set up those two files. It's going to start with your initial control temperature. So we're cooling down the sample block to the desired set point. Then we will turn off the Peltier module so that we can start the sampling cycle. The sampling cycle for each sample, we're going to take a temperature reading of the sample block we're going to run that sample function. So that's pumping the purge volume, move, pumping the purge volume, clearing the tubing, pumping your sample volume, moving the needle to the sample tube, then pumping and measuring the fluid sensors, moving the needle back to the waste location, and then running that cleaning cycle in between samplings. It's then going to inc increment your sample number. So you're moving on to the next sample. It's going to take another temperature reading. Auto home again, just to make sure that the sample needle is at the reference location. It's going to turn off your stepper motors again. Then it will wait for the next sample. So it's going to take your sample interval and run the temperature control function for that sample interval, followed by going back to turning off the cooling module for another sample cycle. When sampling is complete, it's going to tell you sampling is complete, and it's going to keep your samples cold until you return. So currently, this is set up to then regulate the temperature of that sample block for four days. You should not be probably leaving those samples out for four days, but if you did, it would be keeping your samples cold for up to four days. At the bottom here, we have accept. So if at any time you press control C, control C here will jump right down to this accept block and it's going to turn off your Peltier, it's going to turn off your pump, it's going to clean up all of your GPIO pins, meaning getting rid of all those set 
values for GPI opens. If your script comes to a natural close after those four days of cooling, it's going to just clean up your GPI opens. And then at the end, it's going to set your valves back in the locations that they should be in. It is important to note you do generally want to exit scripts by pressing Control C because that makes sure that you're turning everything off. If you just press the stop button here, then your cooler might be cooling forever, your pump might get stuck running. So generally, you do want to press Control C to exit. So that's it for the master script. It is pretty bare bones, but it, it will get you taking samples, and some of those values may need to be calibrated for your individual device, but that is the basic script. Next, I want to show you some test files that are used in kind of setting up and troubleshooting the device. So if you go into your biosampler folder here, first there is a boot script that we put a, a line in our, our Pi's boot process. So this script is going to run when your Pi boots up, and it is just setting your valves in their starting location. The cleaning cycle here, if you want to run a full cleaning cycle in between processes, you can run the cycle and it's going to give you instructions to put your tubing in cleaning solution, then halfway through it'll be cycling that through the, the sample tubing. Halfway through, you take it out of the cleaning solution and just have air clearing your tubing. It'll give you instructions in there. In the test files folder here, there's a bunch of scripts. So auto home is just the auto home function. You're just moving the needle over that reference location over the waste tube. Cartesian test. This one we will go over again in the next video, in the operation video, but it is just going to move the sample needle over each sample tube, and you want to run this script before running the master script just so you can calibrate those sample tube locations, make sure those are all correct, and if you need to change any XY coordinates, you can do so using that script. GPIO cleanup, so this is a useful script. It basically just sets up all the GPIO pins that we use in all the other scripts and then turns them all off and sets the valves in their correct starting positions. So if you are in a situation where your pump is stuck running or your Peltier is stuck cooling or your valve is in the energized state or something like that, you can just run this script and it will set everything back to normal. So next, I'm going to skip over photo transistor test just for a second. We're going to go to the pump test. And so the pump test basically just contains all of the pump functions that we saw in the master script. There's a valve testing function that just switches your two valves off and on. All of those functions, so you can come down the bottom here and comment in and out different individual functions. So if you just want to run your pump or you just want to flip a valve into the other state, you can just run that individual function and this will help you make sure that all of those elements are functioning properly. Next we have simple test. So simple test is a code that was not written by me. It came with the analog to digital converter and this is pretty basic. It's just going to output to your terminal the eight different channels of the analog to digital converter. So the first two here are reading the thermal probes. They're currently reading approximately the same temperature. This is a raw value coming off that analog to digital converter chip. The next two here are your fluid sensors. So I disconnected a fluid sensor to show you what it looks like when something is disconnected. So it should be reading closer to the maximum value here is 1023. So this one being one lets us know that something's wrong with it. There's a wire unplugged. Maybe the, the sensor is not functioning. I just unplugged it to show you what that looks like. The other four channels here we are not using, so they are set to ground and they should be reading zero.
once we check to make sure those are reading correctly, we're going to come over to our photo transistor test. And now this is going to read the two channels from our fluid sensors and just convert that raw reading into a value that's between 0 and 1. So that between 0 and 1 seemed to make a little bit more sense to me for actually reading them. Now remember our valve sensor, that fluid sensor 1, is disconnected so we're getting a basically zero reading from that. Needle sensor, uh, fluid sensor 2, is giving us a more correct reading, so normally they should be about this 0 0.965. This script we will again come back to in the next section, the operation when we calibrate our fluid sensors. The sleep script here you saw in the last video and this energized our stepper motors for five minutes in order to calibrate our stepper motor drivers. So the last couple here if you go in the log temp folder we have measure temp and log temp. So measure temp does just what it sounds like when we start this up it's just going to read the two thermal probes and output the values from those to the screen. The probe number one is in the sample block and probe number two is sitting on top of the radiator. Next, going to log temp, that takes it just one step further. And when we run this script, it's going to turn on the temperature control, which is turning on the Peltier module. Again, we are outputting the two values from the thermal probes to the screen. These two values are also going to be recorded to a log file, so in the same folder with the scripts. These are just going to count up, so the one we are currently on is temp log 4, and it's going to just record those values to the temperature log. Notice probe number 1 here is starting to get colder, as that is in the sample block, and it's starting to cool down. The radiator one is going to start to get hotter. This script we do want to be sure to use control C to get out of. We want to make sure we're turning off the Peltier module when we're not using it, as well as cleaning up all the GPI opens. So in general, that's about all for the scripts. I do want to thank you again for taking the time to follow along here. If you have any questions or comments, again, please feel free to reach out and let us know what you think. We would be happy to hear from you. Please also, the next and final segment, we're going to be going through the operation of the device. So please join me for that. We're going to get going. We're going to calibrate our fluid sensors. We're going to finish calibrating our thermal probes. We're going to make sure that our sample tubes are in the right locations and we have our Cartesian system set up correctly. We're going to get everything going together. That's going to be great. So please join me for that. And thank you again. Hey again, I just wanted to take a quick second here to acknowledge the support we received for this project from DMC Biotechnologies, as well as the guidance from Dr. Michael Lynch. Thanks for helping make it happen.